Today I'm going to be introducing to you a way called katabasami. You put the front end of the hakama. So the longer katana comes from your left waist. Now it's time to fold the hakama. Mm. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. It's me, Shogo, and I have Harumi with me today. Yay! All right. Hello, hi guys. So, because I make a lot of videos related to yaido and also kimono, I've been actually receiving a lot of requests for how do you wear and fold hakama. Shogo, please do make a tutorial video about it. And thank you so much for waiting. This video is going to be that. Yay! So I'm actually going to be taking off the dogi and the hakama I'm wearing right now. I'll be showing how I put on the, the top dogi, how I wrap the obi, how I wear the hakama, and also later on I'll take it off and show you how to fold the hakama too today. Mm. But before I get started though, I do need to tell you guys that depending on the martial art you train in, for example, if you're training in yaido or kudo or Aikido and so on and so forth. And depending on if it's a formal kimono, if it's a casual kimono, there's different ways of wearing it, both for the hakama and also for the obi. Mm -hmm. So please just understand that this is a friend, your friend explaining the way that he does it usually. And there are actually many different methods for wearing and folding and everything too. So I just wanted to say this one point. Okay. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's start. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, I have my dogi on me. Just uh, put it on. Yep, very simple. And by the way, all the dogi and everything that I have, I'm going to be showing you today, I bought at Tozando, the katana shop that we've been making a lot of videos of. Yep. So if you're interested in buying the dogi I'm going to be putting on today, please check out their online website. Yep. So this, the dogi that I have, actually have the strings here. So I'm just going to be first of all tying the strings. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the kimono do not have these strings, by the way. Yep. Yeah. In that case, you would have to have a koshihimo around your waist. And also, um, for the dogi too, you could wear a juban, by the way. You could wear a juban, but I usually don't wear a juban that often for dogi. Yep. Mm. So I just uh, wear a inner shirt like this, and I put the dogi on top. Mm. You just tie the two knots, the top is already done. It's easy as that. Super easy. Very, very easy, yep. So the next, I'm going to be putting on the obi. Yep. Yay. This is a simple kaku obi. It's mm -hmm. the typical obi that men put on. Yep. Yep. I think men only put on the kaku obi, right, I think? No, there is a heko obi too. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. But I actually never put on a heko obi before. Mm. Yeah, so only the kaku obi. Heko yeah. obi is this super casual one, so... Oh, okay, okay. Mm. So this one is probably more common. Yeah. yeah. All for uh, for budo training and also just a fashionable kind of kimono, mm. this kakobi is used. Mm. So if you remember how to wrap this, you can wear both the budogi, the training gear, and also a normal kimono too, so... Yeah. yeah. And there's actually a lot of ways to wrap the obi for men as well. Mm -hmm. But today I'm going to be introducing to you a way called katabasami, mm. which is probably the most simple way to tie the obi. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And especially for budo training, you want to get dressed as soon as possible, mm -hmm. you know, because you want to move on to your training as soon as possible, right? Mm -hmm. I think katabasami is probably the fastest way to do it, so I'd like to teach you that. Yep. So first of all, you actually need to get three times the width of the obi, first actually make a triangle like this. Mm. Yep. And then you fold it in, and then you fold it in again, then that's actually the three times the length of the width of the obi, right? Mm. It was right here. That's right. You don't actually start wrapping the obi on like this. You actually have to fold it, fold the end oh. in order to use it. So you yeah. come here. So three times is about here. Mm. Yep. If it's going to be an obi that you're going to be using for a long time, I, I think you could just, uh, for example, put like a pen, write, write something with a pen in the inside mm -hmm. to indicate it, or you can iron it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can absolutely know where the length is, which is mm -hmm. about here. 
Mm. But it doesn't have to be exactly that length, mm -hmm. by the way. It's just approximately this length. Okay? And then this is the way I usually do it. You put this on your waist. Mm -hmm. Yep. And depending on the person, um, they say you should start with your left waist, right waist, but I start with my right waist. Mm -hmm. I think it differs be between Kansai and Kanto, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I right. heard it before, mm. yeah. But I think I'm doing this the Kanto way. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I live in, I was born in Kansai and I'm living in Kansai, <laughs> but I think this is the Kanto way. The person who taught me was originally from Kanto, so oh. yeah. So I put this on my right waist here, right under my, my belly, my stomach, mm -hmm. and then you simply turn the, wrap the obi around me three times. Yep. Go like this. Keep the folded obi here that you were just holding onto out so you can use this later, okay? Mm, now, nice. it's important that you turn and not the obi so that you can keep the obi neatly under your belly. If mm. you turn the obi and you stay still, mm. it's really difficult to make the right line with the oh. obi here. Yeah, so it's important. I think it's the same for women's kimono too, yeah, right? Yeah, How do you yeah. mean? Yeah. You can't drag the obi. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's best that you don't drag it too, so. And then after wrapping the obi around yourself three times, mm -hmm. this is still really, really long, right? Yep. Whoa. So then you actually have to fold it in mm -hmm. like this. You fold the end and you adjust the leftover length, right? You fold it in like this and you put it inside. Yep, so there's actually two layers of obi here. Mm -hmm. And then this folded end, folded end comes on your other waist. Mm. In my case, on the left side, mm. okay? So you have this folded one and you have this end here on the other waist, okay? From here, it's gonna get a little bit difficult. We need to tie these two ends together, okay? Mm. What we're gonna be doing is you pull this first folded obi out here, okay? Mm. You pull, pull this out, and then you put this underneath the other end, mm. okay? You put this underneath the other end, and then you need to bring the other end into the hole that you just made, like this. And then you make the first knot like this. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you leave this here, this one, the bigger obi end, you put this inside the outer layer mm -hmm. of the obi that's wrapped around your waist. So, and then it's done. Wow. As easy. simple as that, yep. And if the obi is shown, like if you're wearing a kinagashi style kimono, it is better that the length of these two ends are the same. And personally, if you're just going to be training in budo and such, mm -hmm. I think it doesn't have to be exactly the same length. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, firmly tied on your waist, I think that's more important. So I usually don't mind that much. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. So now that the obi is on, let's move on to the hakama next. Okay. So this is the hakama, I'm gonna be putting it on. Yeah. So most hakama, especially if it's a budo hakama, they're mm -hmm. a type called umanori bakama. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's more like simply just baggy pants. You can oh. see the left leg and right leg are separated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Umanori means you're able to ride a horse on, with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a other kind called andon bakama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the andon bakama doesn't actually have the separation mm -hmm. inside, so it's more just like a straight skirt. Mm -hmm. oh. But these ones are definitely more easier to, to move around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if it's an andon bakama, you probably won't be able to do yaido and all the other martial arts. Oh. Yeah. So, you simply hold the front and you put your left leg in, right leg in. Mm -hmm. Be careful that your left leg and your right leg are in the proper sections, by the way. <laughs> Sometimes you accidentally put both of your legs in one section and you can't <laughs> open up your legs like this. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes um, people do not notice this at competitions and what? exams at Yaido. What? Yeah, and they can't open up their legs and they have to leave because they wore their hakamas incorrectly. Wow. Yeah. So you need to be careful that you have each leg in each section, okay? Like this. Then, first of all, you put the front end of the hakama mm -hmm. right over your obi like this. Right over. Yep. Be sure that the hakama is right in the center. Yep, it mm -hmm. doesn't want to be here or it doesn't want to be here. Oh. Yep, be sure that the middle fold is right in the center of your body, mm -hmm. okay? And then 
The front side of the hakama has two strings too, so this goes behind, crosses, and it's best, better to make a X like this over your OB, okay? Mm -hmm. And then this comes back to the front, and this time, under the OB, you cross the two strings like this, okay? And then you fold it over. So your f the front side started here. Once it crosses behind over the obi, it goes under the obi this time. Oh. Okay. So there's two areas here. Mm -hmm. And then again, the front string comes behind you, right? Mm -hmm. This time, you tie the end of the strings under the obi tie, oh. right here. Yeah. And the way you tie any anything is fine. If it's tied, it's completely fine. It can be anything like this. Okay, so it's done. Mm. And then now you bring up the back of the hakama. Back of the hakama. Mm -hmm. Now, on hakama, you usually have these plastic plates here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is meant to be inserted into your obi here. Into the back your of your obi. obi. Exactly, okay. exactly. Yep. So between your body and your obi, you put this in. So the back of your hakama will be supported here. Mm. There are some hakama that doesn't have this, but I have never ever worn a hakama that doesn't. Yeah, so oh. most hakama has this. Yep. So you insert this mm -hmm. here, and then you put the back support, this Whoa, plate, right hard. over the ob. Mm. Yeah. Um, in the past, this was actually made from wood, but I think now it's ma mainly made from plastic. Yep. Mm. And then the back of the hakama actually has strings here too. Mm -hmm. Yep. This comes back to the front. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the back string that comes from the front will be crossed in front of you like oh. this. Crossed in front of you like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the upper string, the upper string that's above the other one, goes under all of the strings that you wrapped under the OB. Okay. okay? Picks everything from down up, you put it in. Oh. Okay? So now all the strings under the OB are all bundled together mm -hmm. with the string from the back support. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's all here. From here, there's actually different ways to tie the front of the hakama, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna be telling you the way it's called Jumonji. So in Yaido or in Kimono hakama, this mm -hmm. is probably the most uh, common way, typical mm -hmm. way that you do it. Okay? So you firmly tie it. And then from here, the bottom string, the bottom string, you fold it, you fold it, you fold it to make this in the front here. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on the hakama, the length of the string is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I would say it's about 15 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about a middle finger, ring finger length. Yes, okay. is what you're trying to fold it into. Mm -hmm. You fold it, fold it, and then you place it sideways, sideways. right in front of you, mm. okay? And then the other string that you have left, this is going to be wrapping what you just made mm -hmm. with the bottom string, okay? So you pull it to the middle, mm -hmm. you have it here, right? You, this goes under it, and then it goes under it again until the upper string is at a right length. And then at the very end, there's no more to wrap around, mm. right? At the end, you stop it here, adjust the length to the side a little bit, and then it is done. Like wow, this. beautiful. So this is the jumonji, the ten. Mm -mm. Ju is ten in Japanese. Mm. So this is the ten. Kanji character, right? Exactly, the kanji mm. character that you made. Mm. Yep. So now you have the obi on, the hakama on, and this is basically the way you wear a hakama and a kimono. It's Great. done. Great. Very, very simple. Mm. Yep. However, though, um, if this was a kimono, that you will usually be wearing a tabi socks, though. Mm -hmm. But this, for me, this is just the budogi, so I usually wouldn't wear tabi, so I'm not wearing anything today. But you would usually wear the socks. So this is how you wear the hakama. It's completed. Yay! So guys, now that we have the hakama and kimono on, I actually wanted to teach you how to equip the katana mm -hmm. on the hakama too, by the way. The mm. two katana. First of all, 
you start off with the wakizashi, the shorter mm. one. Yeah. This wakizashi is inserted into your belt in Hakama from the center of your body. Yep. And again, you wrapped the obi around your waist three times, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So there are actually multiple layers. The wakizashi goes into the layer that is closer to you. There's actually two sockets where you can put the katana in, mm -hmm. but the inner socket that's closer to you, that's where the wakizashi goes in mm. from the center of the body. And then your katana are always on your left waist, by the way. So it comes out from this side, the pocket Nakama has is for where the katana comes in. Mm. Yep. So you actually put one of the strings under the katana. Oh. So this supports the katana here. Okay. okay. Yep. So the tsuba comes at the center of your body mm. and you have the wakizashi on. Cool. The next is the uchi katana, mm -hmm. the longer katana. Now this longer katana does not come into your hakama and belt from the center of your body because you already have the wakizashi here. Mm -hmm. So the longer katana comes from your left waist. <gasps> so you put in the uchi katana on your outer layer of the obi. It's mm -hmm. a different layer from the wakizashi. You put it in from your left waist mm -hmm. and again this also goes under one of the strings yeah. as well. Then it goes in on your left waist like this. The sagio string can be just placed over your katana like this. Mm. Okay? And then mm -hmm. the tsuba of your wakizashi, the shorter katana is at the center of your body. The end, tsukagashira, the mm -hmm. end of the handle of your uchi katana is at the center of your body and then the two katana are well balanced. Oh. Yep. So this is how the samurai wore their hakama during the Edo period. Mm -hmm. So cool. So now then let's move on to folding the hakama next. Now it's time to fold the hakama, mm. okay? So it's best, I believe, you kneel down on the floor mm -hmm. and you hold the hakama this way, as if you're going to be putting it on, okay? Oh, okay. You fold it like this. And then, the back support, you actually hold it under your chin, mm -hmm. like this, first, okay? <laughs> and then you open it up, and then again, in the inside, there is a section that separates the left and right leg, mm. right? You have to fold it in to the right side to fold it neatly. So, you fold the section to the right side, and then you're able to make the hakama completely flat like this, oh. okay? And then you put it down on the floor, but first gently, so you don't break it, you first put the back side up like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And then the strings doesn't matter for now, so you just move it aside. And then you first make the back side clean, but that was actually already perfect. <laughs> yeah. So you make the back side all the folds neatly together, like this. Okay, so the back side is completed. Mm. Okay, so now that the back side is okay, you fold this area here, the end here, the center of the hakama. Mm -hmm. You hold on to all the folds together. Mm -hmm. You flip it over from here. Okay, mm. so you flip Ooh. the hakama over. Yep. And then you might be thinking, oh no, Shogo, you made it all messy. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, if the center here is neat, all the other ones we are going to be fixing from here. Okay. okay. At the back, you don't have to care about all the other ends. Only the middle is needs to be clean at mm. that point. Okay. So from here, let's make all the other other folds properly clean as well. So the back side and the front side, there's different folds. Oh. So you can't fold them both at the same time. Yep. So you start from the back and move on to the front. Ooh. Okay. So once you do it neatly, mm -hmm. now the back and the front, all the folds are neatly done. And then from here, it depends on the hakama. Mm. You could fold in the ends without folding in the sides oh. like this and putting the hakama together like this. Mm, mm, mm. But if you want to make it smaller, mm -hmm. you could fold in the sides. For most budo, budogi hakama, you would fold in the sides, oh. which means folding in the sides like this. Oh. Okay? Yeah. 
And then from here, we're gonna be folding in twice. So first the bottom end, like this, mm -hmm. and then the top end, like this. If you fold it this way, it turns into a clean square shape. Oh, beautiful. Like this, yep. And then from here is where you do the strings. Mm -hmm. This is when the strings are finally done. It's gonna get a little bit difficult from here, okay? Okay. So first of all, the strings that are attached to the back support are actually shorter than the ones that are oh, attached to the that's front. Right. Okay? Hmm. So you bring the shorter string up. Just move it out of the way. Okay. Okay? And then the longer ones. Longer ones, you fold them in half. Mm -hmm. And then you fold them in half again. You cross it over the hakama like Ooh. this. Okay? You cross it over the hakama. Mm -hmm. Next, other side, you do the same. Fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then you cross. So you have an X over X. hakama now, mm. like this, okay? Mm -hmm. Then lastly, this is where the shorter string comes mm -hmm. in. This is going to get a little bit difficult, okay? This shorter string goes over it, and then it goes under the side that that string is on. Mm -hmm. It goes over the X, goes under the whole X, and then it comes up again, right? Okay. Then this actually goes back to this side again, mm. Mm -hmm. and then again underneath. Oh. Like that. So over it, underneath it, over it, underneath. Oh, okay? God. Over, yeah. under, over, under. Over, yep. under, over. Other under. side the same, okay? Mm -hmm. So it goes over the X under the X under the X there we go wow. like that so over under over under yeah <laughs> exactly exactly mm -hmm. yep and then you have the two strings on top of the hakama again mm. these two strings goes on to the loop that's made by the other string yeah so again here, there's actually a loop here that was made by the wrapping we did earlier. Mm -hmm. So you put the other end of the string into the loop. Ooh. And the leftover string, you put it under the wrapping made by the longer string. Oh. Other side, we do the same. Goes over again, goes into the loop made by the other string, goes in. Leftover string goes under the bundle of the strings. And then now you have this clean shape. Oh, so good. beautiful. Just like that. Mm. So by doing it this way, you can make the hakama clean. You can maintain it clean. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you can also keep the strings without get, getting them all tangled up and oh. going all over the place. This is the proper way to fold the hakama. Okay. Great. Yep. So this does need a little bit of practice though before mm -hmm. you get used to it. Yeah, all yeah. the strings are a little bit confusing. Yep. But once you get used to it, it is very fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful how it's well calculated in a mm -hmm. sense. So I think you can enjoy doing it too. Mm. Yep. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any other friends who are wondering how to wear the comma or how to properly fold it and such, it'd be great if you can share this video to him or her. And if you have any other questions yourself about the kimono or the hakama and such, please let me know in the comments. If I missed anything, I'll be happy to make another video about the hakama and kimono. And our goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And we'll see you in our next video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.